Yeah, well, so I had one realization uh, when I was at the Obama White House. It was like 3 a.m. and I was at my desk. And it hit me super suddenly that in order to advance systemic climate action, we need policy and we need that through electeds and we need that through the people. And then my realization that I'd never considered was that you can't expect to have the people on board until they feel something. And I, I had never considered that. So I started thinking more about the human mind and how it relates to climate action and climate narratives and started looking into psychology research. Uh, and it's very clear that fear, guilt and shame is not an effective strategy for long term action, for like building a movement. It's really effective if you need a trauma response out of some, you know, if you need a fight, flight or freeze, fear is very effective. But um, for what we were trying to do in building something long term, we needed to go with something else. and. And that's when I also discovered the science of hope, uh, which is this area of positive psychology that's very backed by research. And what it really shows us is that hope is not just something that feels good. It's a very effective tool that we actively deploy. And if we actively deploy it correctly, then we can get really big results. So it's associated with everything from literally cancer patients living longer to lower divorce rate among high hope couples to like, uh, employees doing much better and teams performing at a higher level, like all of this crazy research. And so thinking about how do we apply the science of hope to the climate narrative um, was a really powerful opportunity. And I think there are applications across society for this, whether it's the government, whether it's corporate climate action, NGOs, what they're doing, all of us together collectively. So total, I mean, it's all interrelated. So I realize that like you can not expect people to save anything if they cannot save themselves. And we know that we have a mental health crisis right now, right? Which can also be interpreted as a crisis of hope, right? It's a human need. If you don't feel hope, you're not okay. That's what ha what's happening. And then we have all these issues, including climate, that are related to that. So the big thing, so if we look at the science of hope, it can be broken down in three things, which is goals, agency, and pathways. And so when they define hope in the research, it's the, the idea that the future can be better and that you have the agency to make it better. You have the power to make it better. So that part, the agency changes everything. Oftentimes when we're struggling with our mental health, it's related to a loss of agency. All of it, but it can be very much related to a loss of agency, right? Like anything I do doesn't change a thing. And we've told people that on climate. That's literally the narrative we have given people and so when we tell people feel fear, guilt and shame, and then we're like, why aren't you acting right? Like anybody could have told us that we are taking away people's ability to act and that's impacting their mental health as well. So they're deeply interrelated. And when we can just address hope as a hope crisis generally, then all else follows, right? All of these societal social challenges we're dealing with, they can be addressed when we provide space for that, when people's mental health is in a better place. Yeah, so I mean, one thing we're seeing in data is that, you know, for Gen Z and Gen Alpha, uh, there is a crisis of hope. Uh, they have very low hope levels, but in all of the engagement I do, and I work with Gen Z quite a bit, uh, they are very receptive to hope. But like, you need to give them a reason and you need to address that directly. And they need to feel seen in that, in their pain and their struggle. And so that's part of this, right? Is like, how do we validate somebody's experience, which is incredibly valid uh, around feeling guilt, shame, fear, frustration, anger, you know, inadequacy, all of these things that are associated with the social movement getting stalled. How do we address that and make people feel seen in that and then reframe in a way that can bring people hope? Um, and the other thing about this is that, you know, when you look at hope research, you don't have to use the word hope. A lot of people don't like that. And I don't, I get it, right? Like you don't want to be the person that's just like shouting from the rooftops, feel more hope, we're going to solve climate, right? It's really going through goals, agency, and pathways and identifying in any situation, which we can look at as any policy issue, any narrative issue, any, any like mental health challenge, what between goals, agency, and pathways is breaking down. It's usually one of them. And that informs the solution. So the one we're really seeing broadly in climate is agency. But for everybody's uh, situation, like what Gen Z is dealing with, th there are different scenarios where it's a loss of strategy or a, lo a loss of goals um, that are determining what's hindering their ability to reach those goals through hope as a strategy.